Yo, what's happening, people? My name is Rudra Kush, and welcome to this final part of me making a melodic techno track from scratch. So, if you haven't seen the previous parts where I have developed the entire idea and fully arranged the track, please watch that first, and then you can come back to this video. So, in this video, I will show you the final touches that I did to the track. We will also go through the mixing and the mastering process. So, I was listening to the track for a few days, and I noticed, you know, some things that were bothering me. So, we will address them first and then we will move on to the mixing and mastering process also i was getting a lot of requests to share this project so i have linked the project in the description of this video so yeah without wasting any time let's get into it all right so this is the project first i will go through the major changes that i did to the track so let's start with the low end so first i changed the kick sound because um it wasn't really you know sitting well with the track so i decided to use a different kick so here is what we have now so as you can see this is just you know more deep and a little bit soft i would say uh, as compared to our last kick and i also changed the mid bass sound so this is the new sound that we have now and if I play it with the kick, it sounds like this. And if we add our sub back, so we will have the complete low end. For the groove bass, I decided not to use it anymore. Uh, the reason being, I do have another ARP sound. They both have very similar sound um, in the frequency spectrum. So I decided not to use it because it was just mudding up the mix. Um, you know, so that's why I just decided not to use it. But if you want to see uh, what the sound is, so this is the sound. And this is the ARP sound that I was talking about. So as you can hear, they both are in very similar frequency spectrum. So avoid using um, sounds that are in, you know, similar space. So you can either, you know, move them one octave up or one octave down or maybe try a different sound but sometimes you can just completely remove it because um, the less is more the lesser the sounds we have it will be easier to mix so in my case i decided not to use it and i think that's everything for the low end then from the drums i removed one of the loop like a top loop it was like a noisy loop and if you want to see how it sounds like you can check out my previous videos but in this track i just completely removed it i did try to um eq it you know lowered the volume and try to mix it in but it wasn't really sitting well with the rest of the drums so i just decided you know completely removing it and the other thing that was bothering me was the off hat um, this one so the sound was you know again not sitting well with the mix so i decided to change the sound so this is the new off hat we have so this just sounds you know more i would say tech housey or clubby you know and this is actually sitting better with the mix All right, so that's it, I think, for the drums. Yes. And the second thing I did was, um, you know, changed the arrangement a little bit. So instead of that loop, which I was using here in this section, I decided to use the shaker instead. So it was, you know, I was using the shaker like this before. So I just, you know, started it from the very beginning. And yes, I think that's pretty much it for the drums. Um, for the synth, I decided to mute one sound. Um, and I think... Um, 
at no i think it was an atmosphere yeah this one so this one this sound i just decided not to use it um it was you know mudding up the mix a little bit so i just decided not to use it so this is what it was kind of like an atmospheric sound so it wasn't really adding much so i just removed it completely and for the effects i did not change anything so the effects is all the same i just adjusted the volumes that's pretty much it and for the vocals i did not change anything so this is my first step when i you know try to finalize the song i go through the entire project and see what i need and what i don't need and if something is you know not really adding much and i am struggling you know to mix the sound either i will change the sound completely or i will just you know completely remove it it helps to clean up the mix a little bit more and easier for us to do the final mixing so after i am satisfied with the overall sound like overall production then i usually start my mixing process but let me tell you something very important for me when i start the track i start the mixing process at that very moment so if i'm adding the kick i'm trying to make sure that the kick you know sits well with the bass if i already have some melodic elements so i just you know uh, think about the tonality of the track so like what tone of the kick i would be needing but uh, of course as the track track progresses um i do make major changes like you know later on in the project project like just we did but uh, my thought process just begins as soon as you know i start the track from the very beginning so i usually mix the track while i am creating the track if that makes any sense like i eq the sounds i think of the reverbs and delays i do compression you know all that good stuff so i just start it from the very beginning usually at this point i am just more concerned if the sound is you know um sitting well in the mix like level wise and also the tone of the sound so eq and level these two things are you know very very important for me so that the sound is balanced well in the track and uh, the eq looks okay so these are the two big things that i would say you know covers most of the mixing process because if your levels are right and your eq looks okay chances are your sound will sit properly in the mix but for some reason if your sound is still not you know um sitting well with the mix i would suggest to change the sound or maybe you know try some different octaves that might help so this is you know just my um process of mixing the track um so i could have just shown this whole process on the video as i was doing you know in the last videos but you will just see me you know just tweaking the different values and just you know comparing the mix um on different speakers and talking about different speakers i like after i do any adjustments i check on different speakers i have like my like my phone um and i have the pair of you know presonus so these are like small speakers but i have like a pair of yamahas so i test it on as many as speakers i can like small speakers bluetooth speakers and the final car test uh, so if i find anything you know unusual i go back into the studio and then rectify that error and you know just do back and forth until i'm satisfied so this is my process of mixing but also one more important thing here is you should not really over complicate mixing if you think you just need an eq you should just use an eq that's it i mean like you don't you know put any more plugins because as a producer you know we like see for for me personally like you know for many years if i see i have only an eq i would i would think that the sound is not mixed i need to put more plugins but uh, over the time i have you know learned that um if i don't really need any compression then i would not you know put a compressor on the track so i would say you know try to just keep the things minimal because it will be easy to mix and in the long run you will be making better tracks so all right so in this video 
I wanted to, you know, go through my um, project and show you like how I have mixed and, you know, um, mastered the track. So I will be starting with the low end. Um, so my kick is sitting at minus five and this is the value for the kick. Let's just solo low end first. And let's play it from a section where we have everything like this and let's turn off the kick uh, the bass for now so as you can see my kick is sitting around minus 13 or something and this is the group and i have you know lowered down the level and i will tell you like why i have done that but uh, for now my kick is sitting around minus 13 and then I will add the sub bass and this is the level for the sub bass around minus 20 and if we add our mid bass so this is the bass group that we have and you can see we are peaking around minus 16 so having a three or four decibel you know difference in the kick and the bass usually you know for me works well um, but of course it depends on sound to sound like this difference can be less of course but uh, it totally depends on the sound but usually like you know three and four decibels works well for this kind of music so this is our complete low end and for the plugins on the track i have um this is the um, the sample itself. Then I have an EQ. Actually, I can just unfreeze the track. So this is the sample that I was using. And it sounds like this. And one more cool tip I can give you here is um, instead of, you know, changing the sound, um, you know, and just forgetting about what sound it was, what I have discovered is, you know, I group the track. So these are the two, I'm like, you can put more samples, of course, but uh, this was my last kick. As you can see, this is very punchy and, you know, um, has a lot of high end. So this is a good way of, you know, testing like the previous kicks and how it is working in the track. I usually do like this, like I don't, you know, comp just change the sample on the track itself. Either I duplicate the track or lately I have started using this method. I just group the track, um, duplicate the chain and I can, you know, put multiple kicks here and test which kick is sound because it's very easy and very convenient as, you know, compared to changing the sample and going back to the same sample that you used before just to compare to two samples. Sounds. so this method i find is very very good so this is the new kick that we have so first i have an eq which i am using to cut these two frequencies uh, this is just you know so the boxiness of the kick i can show you how it sounds without that so, and also i have rolled off some of the high end Next, I have this auto filter, which I'm just automating, you know, in different places like this to basically, you know, keep the track interesting and to also transition from one section to another. And lastly, I have this utility, which I am not using. Like this plugin is always there on every track, just in case I need, you know, like stereo width or, you know, pan. But in this case, this is a kick, so it has to be in center. So I did not use it. All right, so on the sub bass, we don't have anything. I have just the sound directly coming from the synthesizer. And this is the level. And next we have this mid bass and I am using just an EQ to roll off the sub frequencies because our sub is different. I decided, you know, to separate them. So in this way, I have, you know, better control over my low end. If I'm, you know, feeling the mid section is lacking, I can in easily increase the level of the mid bass and I can also do the same for the sub frequencies. 
So if we um, play everything in the low end, it will sound something like this. So this is the group and on the group I have nothing but an EQ which I am actually automating you know to transition here. Other than that I have sidechain. Nothing special. I think yeah, that's everything for the low end. Let's move on to the drums. So first we have this auto filter, which I'm using to cut high frequencies in this section. This is the cool down, which is leading into the break. So just cutting the high frequencies. All right. So next we have this glue compressor, which I'm using to, you know, glue all the drums together. And usually I go with medium to slower, you know, attack and release because um, if you have fast attack, it will make the sound, you know, more crisp and the, it will make the transients, you know, more sharper. But that's not the goal here. Uh, I just wanted to, you know, glue the drums together. So that's why I'm aiming for medium to, you know, um, um, long attack and release. So let's move on to the clap. Um, so I have just an EQ. So for the drums, I usually keep them very simple. I usually just have an EQ most of the times. Uh, sometimes, you know, I add a little bit reverb, but it totally depends on the genre that I'm making. In this case, the clap has an EQ and this is how it sounds. And I have also panned it a little bit to the left. And for the snare, uh, same thing. I am just using an EQ. This compressor, I'm not using it. And this auto pan also, I'm not using it. So this one. And I was feeling that this has, you know, more high frequencies. So I just trimmed them down. And of course, we have some room reverb and I panned the sound to the right a little bit. Next, we have these percussions. So a lot of EQ. Um, compressor, I'm not using it. And I have used an auto pan so that they can go from left to the right. So panning is also really important because um, you can create, first of all, width in the track. And you can also make space for other important things like bass, leads, if you have vocals, all that good stuff. And after that, we don't have anything. Then we have this off hat, same room reverb, some EQ and nothing else. I'm not using them. Next we have this snare ish sound. So this one has an EQ and an echo on one eighth dotted and 40% of the feedback. So as you can notice, it has a rhythm. So I, you know, did a little bit of side chain to keep the track clean and also the same room reverb. Next and also, yeah, I forgot to tell you that I also panned it a little bit to the right. So next we have this hats. So again, pretty simple stuff. We have an EQ, which I'm using to cut all the low frequencies. And this one is interesting. I'm using a vocoder and I can show you what it's doing to the sound. So it's making, making it longer and also it's giving you know more organic vibe, I would say. And I'm automating this release to create this opening effect. And then again, it has a rhythm so i am you know side chaining it to the kick and also using this auto pan to keep the things moving and lastly you know a little bit of the panning and next we have this shaker so pretty much same thing rolling off eq like some side chain some auto pan and you know panning it again to the right and Next, we have this sound. This is the ride. 
So to create this effect, I have used this vocoder and I am like automating this release. Without that, with. And usual stuff, some re uh, reverb and delay. And lastly, we have this clap FX sound. So this is, you know, just three claps here. Yep, I think that's pretty much it for the drums. Uh, there's, wait, there is more. Yep, this one. So this one is just a snare hit before the drop and I have layered the sound with this snare sound. So this is how it sounds by its own. You see a lot of reverb and this is our snare from the project. So they both sounds like this. Yep, and lastly we have this um, build up snares. So, just cutting a little bit of the low end and automating this filter to give this, you know, like building effect. And the reverb that you are hearing is actually coming from this main, you know, um, master effects and that is this endless smile which i am automating just in this part to create this build up effect so that's pretty much it for the um, drums and i did already showed you that we have a glue compressor and this auto filter you know just um, basically to transition and to glue the drums overall so next we have this synth group and I am cutting all the low frequencies from all the tracks in the synth group and I'm just making sure you know there is no like no low frequencies in any of the track um, but I do have like individual EQs on each and every track but this is just for the group because sometimes you know you have distortion and um, other effects which can create some artifacts so I just like to you know keep it clean and safe. So an other thing we have is the glue compressor just to glue, you know, the synth part, you know, um, making it feel like all the synths are coming from one place. Again, you know, medium attack and release. All right. So first in the line, we have our main lead sound. <laughs> So first we are using Serum and I am automating the filter and the LFO rate for the wobbly effect and I can show you the um, LFO automation. So this is the LFO automation and then we have the filter automation which looks like this and then we also have this delay automation. So wherever the melody is ending, I am using, you know, the delay to basically, you know, keep this part also interesting. Let me move to the drop section. So for the processing on this sound, we first of all have an OTT to give you know sound the brightness and more onto your face kind of feel and after that we have eq which i'm using to cut the low frequencies and one more eq to basically cut all the resonating frequencies next we have a compressor to basically compress the sound <laughs> Next, we have this auto filter and I am using it to introduce the sound. So in this section, you know, I'm using it to basically tease the melody. Like this. And in this break section, I am using it to introduce the full melody. 
and in the cool down section i am just using it to basically um, exit the sound so next we have a reverb and this one i just love this plugin this is just you know a very clean sounding reverb and this is um i mean i cannot just stress enough like this sounds amazing so i am using um i think a preset which is this vocal plate long so i'm adjusted you know some of the settings like this drive it and um this you know um eq so to cut low frequencies under 500 hertz and high frequencies and i also adjusted the reverb length um i have noticed you know um for this you know uh, music around 120 and 125 usually you know the reverbs um i use around 1 second to 3 second i would say not more than that um unless and until it's for you know like sound design purpose i like to keep my reverb in this range because i have you know experimented a lot and i feel like this is the you know sweet spot that we need in this kind of music but again there are no rules you can just experiment yourself but for me i think the sounds that i use like typically they sound better in this range next we have this endless smile again so this is um for this build up because when things when all the things are getting affected by the endless smile which is on the master track the lead was still prominent so to wash out the lead even more i used another you know endless smile directly onto the track and after that we have just the side chain from the kick and next we have this utility to basically automate the volume in this section so that i can wash out the lead and bring it you know um louder in the drop section and same i did with this one i am using it to automate the volume in this section because here it was sounding okay but in this section the lead was still loud so i just used an utility to automate you know to keep the volume low in this section and these were the two plugins that i was using before and i decided not to use it because they were you know um they were just you know making the sound very very sharp like this um distortion but i didn't use it and i also stopped using this uh, reverb i think it was um yeah i think I, I it was valhalla vintage verb so i just decided not to use them so let's delete them all right so moving on we have our stabs group and this sounds something like this a lot of delay uh, so first on the group we have this eq and i am you know cutting a little bit of the high end because the lead was um, covering all those frequencies so i'm cutting the high end a little bit then we have this filter which i am using to basically introduce the sound and keeping the first part you know interesting and this is the compressor on the group basically to you know similar like glue compressing the sound so these are the settings if you want to see and then we have our regular side chain on the stab itself we have this eq which i am using to you know cut the low frequencies and the high frequencies also because it was you know bothering me with the lead then we have this um echo let me just unfreeze the track and next we have this echo on 30% drive it and i have adjusted the you know the eq of this delay and i'm using you know around 40 percent of the feedback and this is the left and the right settings so this is how the stab sounds like mm -hmm. 
Next, I love this plugin. So this is the distortion that I'm using, hot tape. Without that, quite a big difference. Then we have EQ because when you add distortion, you will usually get, you know, some unwanted frequencies, especially in bass area and, you know, this high section. So I have, you know, cut the low end and also trimmed some of the high frequencies. And lastly, I'm using an compressor to, you know, uh, compress the sound. Uh, moving on, we have the supports tab. So this is just a layer to basically make the stab sound, you know, heavier. And this support lead sounds something like this. A more aggressive and, you know, more um, heavy sounding. So they're both together very nice. So for the processing, so we have, you know, the sound itself coming from Serum. And then I was using OTT before in the project and I decided, you know, not to use it because it was just making the sound way too bright. I am cutting the low end using this EQ8 and for this layer, I am using this um, wider to basically, you know, um, make it a little bit, you know, more towards the stereo and this sound, we can keep it in center. And in this way, we will have, you know, um, this huge effect from the stabs. All right, uh, next we have this ARP sound. So this sound usually, you know, gives groove to the track. I recommend, you know, if you are making, you know, similar genres to have something, you know, constantly there in the background of your track. So for example, this is playing almost the entire time in the track, but except this um, drop section, because here I just wanted to focus solely on the lead. But other than that, this is playing the entire time. And of course I am, you know, automating this to keep it interesting. So it starts, you know, very low and then it moves up, then comes back down and then moves up again. And also I am using this filter automation and I have, you know, shown you how I have recorded this, um, you know, with my MIDI. So you can watch the previous parts. So for the processing, we have a low cut and this auto filter, a side chain. So very simple stuff. And this is how it sounds like. Then we have this lead two group. So on the group, we have this EQ. I am cutting this, you know, resonating frequencies and we have glue compressor. And this one, I am not using it. I was just, you know, comparing the different compressors. I end up using this glue compressor. So I'm not using it. And then the side chain mixed at around 60%. So for the first lead, which sounds like this, the query lead, um, let me just unfreeze the track. So we have um, Serum, we have this LFO tool, which is modulating this cutoff frequency. So it's doing it the entire time. So things like this, you know, keep the sound interesting. And then this one, I am not using it because the delay I have, I think, yeah. So I have the delay over here. So we can remove this. So we have OTT, which is doing quite a heavy lifting. After that, we have EQ, which is cutting the low frequencies. And then this EQ cutting some of the, you know, resonating frequencies. Um, Autopan, I am not using it. So this is how it sounds. Notice how this is affecting the cutoff. 
Um, so for the layer, I have this. The processing is exactly same because I duplicated the track, but this time we have like a different sound. So for layering, I would say avoid using similar sounds because it will just make your, you know, track muddy. Um, I suggest you using like, you know, two very different sounds. All right, next we have this effect. So pretty usual stuff. We have EQ cutting the low end and this, you know, high frequency. Then we have this delay with, you know, similar settings as before, one eighth by one four, around 60% feedback and mixed at 35%. And again, the same plugin for distortion. So I'm cutting, you know, quite a bit of the low end and the high end. And this is, um, I think I'm not using it, yeah. So pretty basic stuff. And it's mixed in, you know, around 22%. Uh, yeah, I forgot to tell you like what was the levels on the, uh, on the mixer track itself. So for the synth lead, it's, uh, you know, around sitting at minus three. So the stab is around minus 15, the main layer, and the supporting layer is around minus seven. The ARP sound is sitting around minus 11, and the lead one is sitting around minus seven, and the support for it is around 13. So levels are very, very important when it comes to mixing. So once you have you know all the levels correct, your track will already sound way better. Um, whenever I think of mixing, I think it like you know like a scene of the movie where you have your main character and you have you might have you know supporting characters and then you have a background a foreground all of that stuff so as a director you have to decide which sound is important in the mix and you have to highlight it and other elements will be you know just to support the track or it will act as a background and in our case we have the lead sound which is the star of this you know show and then all these elements basically are fillers and all these elements are the background so if you approach your mix like this i'm pretty sure that your mix will sound way better and then we have some, you know, frequency fillers, I, I call them, because their job is just to fill the frequency space. So just a synth sound, you know, um, I have just cut the low end and, you know, did a quick side chain and, you know, panned the sound to the right. And for the other things I have not panned. Yep, so this one I'm panning it to the right. And this is the exact same copy, but in reverse. And I am mixing it in, you know, at minus 4.5 and exactly same processing. So yeah, I already showed you on the group, we have this EQ, which is cutting the low end and the glue compressor to compress all the sounds together. So that's it for the synth part. And then we have this atmosphere group. So first of all, our drone, um, I did not change anything in the drone. I just changed the volume to make it, you know, sit better in the mix. And for the pad, we have low cut, uh, high cut, a Valhalla shimmer, which is mixed at 34%. And I'm slightly making in, you know, wide so that um, the synths can sit, you know, in the center. And then we have our side chain and we are mixing it at 21%. I mean, 21 decibels. 
and this one i am not using it and i already told you this was not really adding much it was just mudding the track so i decided not to use it and rest is just you know fx and one shots you know stuff to basically transition from one section to another and i usually just you know pan them a little bit sometimes like this and most probably you will see you know an eq maybe a side chain but that's pretty much it but you know some of them don't even i haven't changed anything so yeah this one so this one i have used the low cut and yeah this one i have the side chain because i think this is the string sound yeah and the long reverb white noise mixed in minus 32 and then same thing and like acting as a downlifter then we have this just you know um, using the reverb and i have also panned it to the left same thing with this one just some effects to keep the track interesting and this one i think i'm using it in the build up section like a bass drop kind of stuff so i am panning it to the right a little bit and this is the level for the sound and this one is just uh fx sound um and most of these um you know um, sound effects are from you know production music live and the producer school sample pack so i have told this you know multiple times in my mid videos that i mainly use you know these sample packs um but i still get a lot of questions about what samples i'm using so i'm using the producer school and the production music live sample packs and last but not least we have this so yeah, pretty basic stuff and there is nothing on the group. Okay, so finally we have our vocals. So I did not change anything in the vocal. They are exactly the same like I produced. So the only thing I changed is the gain level. I just, you know, try to mix the vocals like a, you know, a little bit better in the mix. So I adjusted the volumes. But I will still go through what's on them, uh, like what plugins are on them. So for this one, this is the effects. Just to, you know, give the audience like a, you know, sense of excitement, like they're will be vocals so this is a really cool you know arrangement tip if if there is something you know in the track that will be coming later on in the track it's you know usually a good idea to tease that you know in the beginning so that it maintains the cohesiveness in the track like in this section and in this section and also you know it just makes the track a little bit more interesting because this music is very repetitive so stuff like this keeps your track interesting and this is the second layer heaven is our future so this is you know more like um whispery stuff i would say um like no, because i have cut the low end a lot and we have um, a, quite a big delay and this one I was using it but I did not like the effect so end up not using it we have a compressor an OTT which I was using but decided not to use it and the echo so I am um, automating this delay Heaven is our future. And finally, we have our lead vocals. So the same exact processing. This one, I'm not using it. So EQ, compression, some more EQ, cutting out some of the resonant frequencies. And I'm mixing it. You can see like 
the levels here. All right, so that's everything for the mixing. Um, I will quickly go through what's on my master and then we will have our final listen. So first of all, um, I have been, you know, getting a lot of requests for providing the template for this track. I mean, the project file for this track, you will be finding that in the description of this video. So what I have done is I have two different chains. So because some people might not have this compressor. So, but again, this is just a compressor. So I have used a glue compressor instead. So if you don't have these plugins, so you can just turn them off and use this glue compressor and uh, you can check what settings I have done. But I have the plugin, so I'm going to use this one. So we have next we have this endless smile, which I already told you we are automating just in this part. Then we have the EQ, which I am, you know, cutting everything below 20 Hertz, which is not really required. And the very high frequencies above 16 K and some resonant frequencies in the track. And then we have some saturation. Uh, again, I am using this um, black box saturator. I love this plugin a lot. So I'm just adding, you know, 12% of the saturation and this is the distortion, you know, the mode and I'm just cranking it up around 58% and lowering down the, you know, final output. We have next on the list. So again, then again, if you don't have this plugin, you can use this saturator. You just simply needs to turn this off and turn this on. But in my case, I will just keep this one for now. All right, so next we have ozone and I am first of all, you know, making a slight, you know, cut in this, you know, 500, 600 area and just providing the track a little bit air. And next we have this stabilizer. Uh, this is, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure you have seen Soothe plugin. So this is kind of similar because I don't have that. So I'm using this EDM and this is the percentage that I'm using for shaping the sound. Uh, usually, you know, keep it around 15, 20 ish. Maybe it's less sometimes, but in this case it was, you know, making the track more, you know, clear. So I end up using around 28%. And this one, I'm not using it. And then we have this imager. So, these are the settings if we want. So we are just, you know, giving more stereo width to the higher frequencies as compared to the lower frequencies. Then some dynamic EQ, you know, again, um, targeting those resonant frequencies. And this one is, I'm not using it. So that's it for ozone. And, and then we have two limiters. So this one is really, you know, giving that gain to the sound but I don't you know rely just on one limiter so I have two so this one will be you know catching all the high peaks in the sound and then we have the final limiter which I am you know using on these settings so this is gonna make you know the final loudness of the track so again, if you don't have um, these this limiter, you can use this Ableton limiter also, which I have used here. And if you don't have this invisible limiter, you can just simply turn on this. And but in my case, I have this. And last, we have this span. Just to, you know, check the uh, spectrum, and then this one I use it to basically check the LUFS value of the track. All right, so that's pretty much it for the mixing of this project. And I will play you the final track, like from start to finish.
that's everything for this course and i hope you guys enjoyed this and learned something from it so if you want you know similar videos in the future please let me know i've been getting a lot of questions that if i can share this you know project file so yes i am sharing this project file you can find the link in the description and you can you know get the project from there so if you want to deep dive into the project and want to see how i have arranged the track what sounds i have used and you know how i have mixed the track and all that good stuff you find the link in the, in the description of this video and once again thank you so much for watching the videos and if you have any questions about the whole series or if you have any suggestions for me you can just you know leave that in the description and i'm also you know showing you my instagram if you want to say hi or if you have any questions you know you can also reach me on instagram so yeah once again thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one peace